Hello, and welcome to tutorial 3 in the second series of the Game Guru tutorial series. Um, today I'm going to start a several part uh, video sequence in which the uh, tip, tips that was given in the last two videos will be put into actual practice, incorporating a new level similar to the first series, but not taking as long to do. Um, I intend to create a small game where you will move from several zones, um, introducing new concepts and going over old concepts to solidify the knowledge. There'll be a little bit more scripting than there was in the first series, doing things that are a little bit more complicated, but will allow a richer and more unique game experience. And so without further ado, um, I shall begin. The rough plan, because as you know, with me, perhaps, um, it's not always there to be. Sometimes I like to go to sea. Um, I intend to have an outdoor scene where you have to uh, find a key um, to access some sort of building. Within this building, there'll be some sort of task. Perhaps obtain a second key to leave the building again to the same map, but different somehow. And not post-apocalyptic like the demonstration, but just somehow different to go to a, a, um, a second destination to finish the game. Perhaps you pick up something in the first building and deliver it to someone in the second building. Um, so we'll start to do that now. I'm going to build first the outdoor scene. And as I previously mentioned, um, you don't want to use everything here. It's much too big. But I like to start with a nice random level, just to give you some uh, definition, some depth, something to your world. So this is a nice place to start. Um, I think I like the look of this clearing here. So let's have a look. I think I'd like a lake. So we'll use the uh, um, shape mod tool to cut a hold, to cut a hole into the floor, so we can get to the water level. Then take level mod to find the floor of my leg, and then I can use stored level mod to instantly create puddles to that depth. So I'm gonna—it's <laughs> a big dinosaur footprint. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to create a, um, a series of pools, uh, interconnected maybe, or one of them maybe separate, like this, and that would be the lake area. Um, I want a raised mountainous area, so if I level off a high mountain, I can use stud level tool to get that height here. If I go in top down view, I won't get that. Um, what happened there was, as I was looking at this angle, and I raised the terrain, the um, the cursor, the yellow receptacle, uh, moved along the suddenly increasing height of the terrain to create a sort of line to where it happened to be until I let my finger go. You can avoid that by going your um, your top down view, because your receptacle never moves from the uh, the X, Z or X, Y position on the plane, depending on which orientation you like to use. Um, so I'll build just some mountainous things here. I'll variate this later um, because I don't want just a plateau, I just want some height. Now I'm not too concerned at this point about trapping my player in, I'm just roughing out the game world. Now this is in itself a huge space. If you consider the average height of the player, which is that, at the player's eye view, this is a big section of map. Um, just want to make it interesting. If I raise this a bit, grab that, a quick click just to get the, more, the height, and then I can carry on spraying these things around. It's Now, what I really want, I'm trying to do is to create um, an interesting 
background to the players I view but this is much too level this is unrealistic I want some higher mountains so if I raise let's say this mountain a lot higher find its level mod which is about there yeah, that's a bit bigger than the other mountains so I go back to the top down and I'll spray that around as well just randomly um, the idea being to get uh, what's the word to undulate the landscape to make it not all on one level plane um, yeah still needs a bit of work um, what I'll do here I'll take my smooth tool make it huge and just work off some of these spikes in the mountains now it's a slow process this one because I'm actually smoothing over a gigantic area and it doesn't look like it because I'm I'm so high up and so far away but there's a lot going on here now this will also help the uh, variation of the background because the high peaks are being blended with the low peaks on the floor and so the tall things get small the small things get larger and the floor kind of rises up to meet the mountains so now this can take a while depending on how long you want to do it for but it's already having an effect you can see a lot of the peaks have been smoothed off slightly you can actually see the difference if you zoom in a bit it's hard to tell from up here that anything's actually happening um, but if you get in you can physically see the changes this is probably a better angle to do it now you don't want it perfectly smooth mountains aren't perfectly smooth um, you just want to take away some of the the nastier edges and just create a nice variance in the background now as I said I'll make this player proof later um, I might do that this time using entities uh, just to break up the line a bit because the texture is a little bit samey um, at this scale and you don't want it um, to become boring so let's have a look at that ah now I see that's a lot better you wouldn't tell that was just two levels the blend has really helped oh let's start this out now that's that's terrible I'm keeping it because accidents are just another way of being creative so I'll smooth that out this can be like um, a plateau no oh, maybe maybe that can be where one of the buildings is like um like a building on a raised hill like a castle or something hmm I think there's some castle tiles we'll try that um, I won't be doing the building today but if you leave a comment in the section below if you want to see a castle or a scientific high-tech facility or some weird alien moon base or something you let me know what you want to see and that's what I'll do so I'm going to retain this plateau so I will make it smaller level it off come to the top view so I can see better we'll have a way in and we'll, oh this is a good trick if you press and hold your level tool and then press plus you will level things out as your receptacle expands so that's a, a cheaty way of doing it because if you just press this like that you take some level from the raised hills at the side so it wouldn't be the same level as your path so keeping it pressed ensures you stick to the same level or just use the fixed level I mean that would also work um, I'll smooth off those edges a bit because it's the incline is too severe and so you get all this texture stretch and this a kind of polygon roughness now there's two ways to resolve this actually the first one is to apply a smooth tool to smooth it out nice and good the second way is an entity placed at the side of the mountain at the height of the mountain 
And so the actual deformed stretch geometry is hidden behind the entity itself. And the entity itself can be anything you want it to be, um, like a cliff edge. So just smooth this down a little bit now, um, because I don't like rough edges. I can always tweak it later once I know what I'm building there. So I'll just smooth out this as well. It's a bit rough. Um, and let's have a way down into this. So the ramp mod, let's say we um, here, no, here, I want the bottom level of the thing, the pond, to come up like that. I'll do that a few times to get a bit of variance in the terrain. And then I will blend the result. I take care not to blend too much of the mountain next to it because I don't want to destroy my plateau. Um, I didn't intend to create that, but now I have, I like it, so I'm keeping it. Um, but this gives the player a way to access the water, and if the player falls into the water, it gives the player a way to get out of the water. Except here. I just make this shallow, so the player can still get through, through, and out. So it's a good tip. Uh, try to not trap your player in water. They don't like it. They complain. Oh, I'm going to smooth all these edges. Um, because water's edges is naturally smooth in most cases because of erosion. Well, in a static lake like this, less so. Because it's the motion of the water which would erode the edges. But for argument's sake, we can say make it smooth. There we go. Much nicer. Now, I think to paint some different terrain at the bottom of the lake, I like this one. These ones for the bottom of the lakes because it's kind of um, gritty and rocky. It doesn't get too much surface weathering. So it would be rough. Um, so I like to spray the bottom with that. Also, it creates a kind of a nice mud dirt texture, which near a shoreline is quite effective. Um, so that's, this is my texture of choice when I'm doing lakes. Um, not too much, um, too much of a good thing, as I say, but just enough, just to give it a touch of character. Like this. Just break up the edge a little bit. And up there as well. Now if we go down to the bigger one, I can, but it's a lot to be careful of putting too much in one place because it's just a big patch there. So just if that happens, you can take a lesser texture, just blot it out a little bit, and then go back like that. Now I'm going to use that on the deeper bits, not near the edges, because I like to keep those a gradient a gradient a gradient and I'll take the white one the white kind of stone and I'll put that on the island and the estuary and just near the edges so there's like been a bit more weathering on the grass in these places not too much just just enough to break up the textures and again if you press too hard or hold too long and you get a huge blob like that just take one of the middle of textures and just plot it out a little bit uh -huh. just keep this near the water's edge um, because I want to keep the grass um, the grass here because I'm going to put some trees down I think and some bushes make it nice um, hmm this looks interesting. Well, I'm going to make a little little hidden valley here, I think. So, uh, if I take my level tool, bring it down, and just draw a rough path into the mountains, curve it so it's out of sight, so you can't see it from your set position, and then crease it a little bit. So, from over here, 
you can't see where it is at all. It's completely hidden. Get a little close. <laughs> I lost it. Uh, wow, that really is hidden. Oh, there it is. From over here, you can't see it because it blends in. Once you're in, it's a hidden cave. So we'll, um, we'll smooth this out a little bit so it's not stretched and horrible. I'll be taking care not to stretch this side of the mountain because it will just level out and um, reveal your hidden cave. I'm saying cave, it's more of a... I don't actually know what it will be called. Um, not a valley. Crevice? A hidden crevice? Yeah, we'll call it a crevice. There we go. So the player would come over here and follow this path around and there's a hidden area. We'll fix this in the um, the section where we... On the last video it was like... Um, I just went around the level tweaking bits. Things like this would be fixed mostly at that bit. I'm just fleshing out the rough map here because on the last series I took um, many videos to create the world um, which contained all the individual uh, instruction to do that. This is just using everything from that series to create a new world. So I'm liking this. So I'm going to save this as um, top 2. Or 22. 22 is fine. Um, hmm. So there's the terrain mapped out. The edge is smoothed off. We've got a nice lake, plateau. Going to have something here. Going to have something there. And some trees. So, so now the terrain has been painted, we are going to introduce some trees. Trees would also help mask this. Um, canyon is the word I was looking for. Uh, so I'm going to use some trees here to mask the entrance. Some trees around the edges to mask the edge of the mountains. Remembering to break up any straight lines, you, as many straight lines as you can. There's very few instances of straight lines in nature. So trees, buildings, rocks, anything that can help break those lines will make your world more believable and realistic. So if we go to entities, new entity, foliage, and find a nice looking tree. Now, as before, the animated ones aren't the best for painting, spraying on. Um, you best use a static tree for spraying and add animating trees after the fact to give you scene a bit of life. So let's look at a few of these trees. Um, tree fall looks interesting. Oh, that's a nice tree. Good leaves, nice texture. Um, nice roots, so you can get a nice um, uh, variation in your landscape rather than just if it was like this it would be a bit unbelievable if you ever walked in a woods you'll know that roots stick up out of paths and come up and down here and there and everywhere it just makes your scene a little bit more real um, but let's have a look at the other trees um tree five oh that's a nice it's um it's like a silver birch or something and yeah we have root stock in this one as well what else do we have here Tree six. Let's just do the numbers. Ah, what a roll! Right, tree seven is animated, so I'm not going to touch that one. And the other trees are animated too. So, spruce. Ooh. Yeah. Right. These are all nice trees. I can't use them all uh, because there's too much variation here in tree species. Um, if I drop him. And him. I'll use these two trees for the landscape. Uh, firstly, they're a similar colour uh, but a different shape, so that will help break up the landscape. And secondly, they're nice and tall, so they work well in the mountainous areas. So this was tree uh, five and six. So I'm going to delete those, go to top down view by hitting G, select tree five from the sidebar, so it's locked in my cursor. Hit I, no, 
increase the um, receptacle by pressing plus key, the I key allows you to spray the trees under the receptacle. Remembering that when you spray them on, it gives a slight variation in scale and rotation. So you will have to go in later to tweak the roots, which if you remember from the first series, was a big job. So we just spray liberally along the outside. Press I to cancel the spray. Press T to enter terrain mode and E to go back into entity mode. Then we can delete some of the trees that aren't right. That are inside the mountain or in a clearing or growing in a lake. Uh, no. Um, no. Uh, you two are too close. I'll get rid of you. And you go in. And you don't make it. And you three are too close together. So I'll get rid of you. And you those four there are actually super too close together. I'll get rid of you. Oh, what are you doing? I'm going to leave him. I'm going to have him growing at the side of the mountain, but I'll get rid of him. And that one. Now, you might think I'm picking these at random. And you'd be right. I am. I'm just getting rid of the trees I don't like the looks of. Things which I don't think would work. Because um, as soon as I've thinned the forest a bit, I'm going to go in and adjust the heights, and the rotations, and the scales, and the roots. Um, but these trees are too big to be so close together. This wouldn't happen too often in nature. So it's not going to happen too often here. Trees tend not to grow too well in lakes. So I'll get rid of those. There we go. That's, that's too close. Ah, oh, there's some in the mountains as well. Okay. Now I could have used a smaller receptacle, but I wanted an ass spread. And it's no effort at all to go in and just delete things like that. Trees don't grow too well in rock. Um, Any more? Yeah. Get these away from the edge a bit. I want them over there, kind of towards the mountains, not so much towards the lake. Okay, that's a good spread of those. Now what I'll do, highlight tree 6, which is the other style of tree, uh, hit I, and then spray this on as well. Now, if you tried to spray on more tree 5s, you would replace the trees that have already been sprayed on. But spraying on a new object, a new entity, and this is true for any entity, a different entity will not touch the previous entities that you've sprayed on. Only of the entities of the same type will replace entities previously sprayed so I'm going to spray a few of these the and the and the T E now I'll do the same thing I'll go in again and delete stragglers things which are too close together things which are in the mountains in the lakes in other trees but this is okay they can grow together like this because this is a bigger tree that's a smaller tree yes it's fine. Helps as well to walk through it like a player would. If you see anything that looks odd, then chances are anyone playing your game will walk there and see it and think it's odd. I mean, this is a great view for an overview, but it doesn't help from a player point of view. See here. This um, might have worked, but I don't want anything near the lake in this one, so I'm going to get rid. He's too close. Too many, too close together. Um, hmm. That one's nearly fallen over. Um, I think that's about it. Just move you over there a bit. You're too close. Separate. No. Uh, no, there's not too many trees now near the mountain, but that's okay because I can place individually too. Just make sure you do not have your spray receptacle on, so you can press I a few times to see, and then yes it's on, so now it's off. Holding down shift, I'll put one there, I'll put one here, 
Uh, pop one there. I want them quite close to the edge, but not super on the edge. One there. Um, I'll leave this clear. Maybe I'll have something here too because this is the ramp down, so it will have been cleared. I'll put one there. Um, I'll leave that clear too. I'm not sure what that's going to be, but I think it's going to be something. I'll grab the other tree, keep it interesting. Put one there and one there. So, if I come out a bit, I've got a nice looking valley, I have a lake, I have a raised plateau for some sort of building, I have a hidden canyon, which is so well hidden, I've lost it again. Oh, there it is. Um, I'm going to put something here, a uh, nice forest. I'm going to put foliage down at a future point, but not yet, because I want to get more um, scene-specific details included. What I will do is go up here to paint grass, click, increase the size of my receptacle, and everywhere where there's trees, I'm going to paint grass. I'm not going to paint grass in my clearings, uh, nor am I going to paint grass on the sandy areas of the terrain. Um, this is just uh, foliage for the forested area. Remembering, of course, if you accidentally spray on a mountain, you can hold down shift and it will delete the grass. So this is just your basic flow coverage. If you find yourself up here and you can't see the wood for the trees, come down here a bit to the player's eye view once again to paint your grass. Um, it can be a time consuming process depending on how big your world is, how big your receptacle is, and how detailed you are going to be. But you can be a little bit rough with this. It's randomly placed grass and if you paint up the mountains you can always reduce it and just remove it from your mountains like this you might get the odd tuft growing up there but you can always go back and delete it later there we go so I'll paint some more here increase that again now at the moment i'm just holding down the left mouse button and using the wasid keys to glide through the forest so I don't have to move my mouse as much um, it's a little hack and it could go very wrong but uh, it does make it a little bit easier for painting strips like this mm -hmm. ah, good I'll get that a little bit there as well and make sure you don't draw grass underwater as well because the grass is surface grass and it wouldn't do too well underwater. It would render under there, but it wouldn't look right. Leave this bit clear, like so. Uh, a bit there as well. And just have it phasing out as you get here. And a bit there. So, I will save. I will place down a start marker at the place where I intend the play to start, which will be next to the lake looking at the race plateau uh, which will be here and I will test game so here we have it the trees nice grass mountains in the distance variating level height it looks very nice this is an issue that looks much too flat I'll do something about that later this is supposed to be flat, that's where the building's going to go. Got nice water, nice reflection, nice lake. It's a good um, um, it's a good shape, nice and random. The texture works nice. The trees are good. Yeah. But I'm pleased with that. Now, one last thing I'm going to do before I end the video is I'm going to change the sky because I want this to be a darker level. So I hit tab twice. And up here in world settings, you have sky type, terrain type, and vegetation type. You press and hold the left mouse button, and you can choose any of these for your sky. Um, you may not see all of these, because some of these are DLC, and I'll try not to use DLC content. Um, but I'm going to choose sunset, one of my favourite skies. It's cloudy, slightly overcast, with a nice glow in one direction, so... It's really good to help building a story 
because it kind of sets a good atmosphere it's not just a uniform sky type also the terrain type I am going to leave it as grass I was going to change it if you wanted to change it you could do so here in terrain type to desert um, ice lava lush I'm gonna leave it as lush for now it might change later finally vegetation type lusher and it means this painted grass you could change that to weedy and it would automatically change all the painted grass in your scene and I actually like that a lot better than Lusher, so I'm actually going to keep that. Um, excellent. So, that ends this first video. Um, again, leave a comment about what type of building you'd like to see up there. I'm thinking castle. I'm thinking science facility. I'm thinking alien base. Um, we have all of these types of models available, so leave a comment what you'd like to see, and I'll build it in the next video. Anything else you'd like to see, also let me know and I'll see what I can do. Until then, thank you very much and I'll see you next time.